What is up guys, it is Marcus from Perspective Sports and today we'll be discussing the new NFL CBA agreement and it is quite the doozy for all the wrong reasons and it was voted to be ratified 1019 to 959 and 500 players refused to vote. And before we get into the details of the agreement, I just want to ask you all to please excuse the background. Uh, I'm in the garage, this is kind of my emergency recording spot because there's a lot of noise in the house. I wouldn't be able to get the video done with the tremendous amount of noise that's in the house. And so, with that being said, let's get into some of the big changes coming with this new CBA. And the first one is the owners can increase the season to 17 games. I believe they have from 2021 to 2023 to make that decision, which will probably be made in 2021, which is as soon as it possibly could. And as another part of that, if the season is expanded to 17 games, the players' revenue share will increase to 48.5%. They voted to expand the playoffs from 12 to 14 teams. Now only the top seed in each conference will get a bye week. The rookie minimum salaries will increase $100,000 and other minimum salary players will increase $90,000. Game day rosters go from 46 to 48. Active roster goes from 53 to 55 and practice squad goes from 10 to 12. The THC testing window goes from four months to two weeks at the start of training camp and players cannot be suspended strictly for testing positive for THC. A new neutral discipline officer will rule on punishments for violations of the player conduct policies. Appeals, however, will go to Roger Goodell, who will have the final say. And this deal is phenomenal for the owners. And it is horrific for the players. And now I want to take a look at the player sentiment around the league. But first, let's look at what the Players Association had to say. They released this statement. We understand and know that the players have been split on this deal including members of our EC. Going forward, it is our duty to lead. However, we may feel as individuals to bring our men together and to continue to represent the interests of our entire membership. And I'm just going to come out and say it. I think the NFL Players Association failed the players. Now, this is not an indictment on J.C. Treader. I'm not saying he's incapable, incompetent, any of that. For those who don't know, he was recently promoted to the NFL Players Association president. But I think everybody in that room dropped the ball. This vote should not have happened. It shouldn't even have been up to vote. And I say that because the current CBA runs through the end of next season. And so you have just a little under 11 months to negotiate, to bring the owners to the table and figure out what the players actually want. But they allow the owners to put the press on them to get it done now and they're going to pay for it for the next 10 years. A lot of the guys who are involved in this aren't even going to be playing in 10 years. And so they're going to be paying for it practically for the rest of their careers. And I'm going to get into exactly why I think that's the case in just a second. Let's just start with the player sentiment from around the league. And let's start with Malcolm Jenkins. The democratic process has played itself out, and we must be committed to unifying our current and former members. While I don't agree with the decision because of the negative impacts on some current and former players, I do respect our process and will push forward accordingly. Eric Ebron said, can't believe we agreed to that, LOL. We can only play this game for so long, and y'all don't want everything we can get out of it? Shaking my effing head, 2030, y'all do better. Darius Leonard responded to that and said, man, I'm so hot, bro. And then Allen Robinson also responded to that tweet saying, so weak, fam. Dudes want to vote out of fear, and it really shows where dudes' heads at. And you know what, Allen Robinson? You're absolutely right. This was a vote out of fear. And I'm going to tell you what I think they were afraid of. They were afraid of a work stoppage. They were afraid that those checks weren't going to keep coming because the owners were just going to lock the league out. They were going to shut it down. And we, I'm not talking about forever, obviously, but they were afraid of those checks not coming in. And so they just voted. Yes, just to prove it. It is what it is. And that's a vote out of fear. And that's why I think the NFL Players Association should have stepped in and said, hold on. We're not doing the vote. We're going to push this back. We're going to get everybody in a room. Well, not every, you know, we're going to get the representatives in a room. We're going to get a couple extra people in the room. We're going to figure out what we want and we're going to negotiate for it. Because this was the year we were supposed to get guaranteed contracts. This was the year we were supposed to get better benefits, better better benefits for injured players, retired players. This was the year. Remember when NFL players used to always tweet and complain about NBA players' contracts, MLB contracts? Remember they used to complain about that? Now was the time they were supposed to get something like that. This was the time. This negotiation was when it was supposed to happen. And they shot themselves in the foot. When it was time to get to the table, they folded like cheap cardboard. And it's it's disturbing to see because when Aaron Rodgers said the players were not thinking critically, he was 100% right. Because there's no way you look at this deal and say, 
this, uh, this is the best deal we can get. I think this is the best deal we can get. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Let's sign it. Let's vote yes. There's no way. And then you have 500 players refuse to vote. You can say didn't vote. You can make it sound however you want. They got the thing. They refuse to vote. 500 players refused it. And the players who voted in favor of this voted out of fear. They knew they can get a better deal, but they didn't want to run the risk of a work stoppage. And you had another, you had just about a little under 11 months to figure it out. I mean, and what did we trade it for? Okay, so I guess the big news out of this is the THC. Okay, wonderful. Great, 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 great. Players won't be suspended for testing positive for THC anymore. And the window goes from four months to two weeks at the start of training camp. So you basically have to stay clean for two weeks. And it is what it is, right? Stay clean for about two weeks at the beginning of training camp. Even if you're not, you still won't get suspended. So we traded all of that for that, for weed. And I don't want to boil it down to just weed because I know there's some other benefits in there. Like, And when you look at the neutral discipline officer, if you want to appeal that, because I, I believe neutral, I, I mean, they're going to point the guy. But if you want to appeal it, guess who you still got to go to? Roger Goodell, the same guy you wanted to get the power out of his hands, is still there. Roger Goodell is still the end-all, be-all. And you had, I'm going to keep saying it because it, it's continuing to bother me, just under 11 months to negotiate that. You know what? We don't want Roger Goodell to have anything to do with the player conduct policy. You go to the owners, you say, look, here's a stack, here's a stack of things that we think he mismanaged and mishandled. We want the neutral discipline officer, and let's say we create a board. Three to five people that we have a, you know, a tiebreaker, but Roger Goodell's not on that board. If you want to appeal what he had to say, you go in front of the board, whatever the board says, boom, that's it. We don't, want, we don't want Roger Goodell in charge of player conduct policy. We think he's fumbled this many times in the past. Look at these. These are what we think he's fumbled. And we, Jerry Jones, I'm sure you agree. You know, start to point people out. I'm sure you agree. And so, with that, with, with that in mind, there's certain things that we could have done if we just slowed down. Slow down. That's all we had to do. And we could have got some things done. Maybe we would have got to 50-50. Probably not, but we could have made a push for it. You know, there's, there's other things that could have been done. We could have had more guarantees in the contract. We could have had some better built-in benefits in the contract. We could have taken care of the former players a little bit better. You know, there's certain things that we could do. But it is what it is now. It's done. And I know this video kind of turned into a rant. I just had some talking points. And so it hurts. Looking at this deal hurts because leading up to this deal, it was a lot of big talk. It was a lot of we're going to get those guarantees. It was a lot of, we see those NBA players. We saw what they got. We want that. And then you get to the table and you just sign anything. You just say, you just vote yes to anything. And it's out of fear of a work stoppage. It's out of fear of a lockout. Let it happen. Let it happen. And I'm not here to count anybody's money or anything, but if you can't afford a month or two of a lockout, you ain't living right in the NFL. I know practice squad makes, if you're on 17 weeks, $136,000. That's good money. That's more than the average person. Now, again, I'm not counting anybody's money. But if you can't survive without a month or a couple of weeks paycheck that you're going to get on the back end anyway, you, there's bigger problems. And so this hurts to see. I want to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. See you there.